but you don't believe in 2,999 gods, uh -huh. and I don't believe in just one more. Right. Well-known comedian Ricky Chave made a fool of himself during the Late Show. He was interviewed about the existence of God. His answers sound thought-provoking, but on closer examination, they're nothing but irrational slogans. Welcome to the channel, my name is Karel de Lange and my goal is to help you see and defend the truth of Christianity. Today we'll take a critical look at some of the things Ricky said about the existence of God. Let's start with his claim that atheism is not a belief system. True. An agnostic atheist is someone who doesn't know there's a God or not, as no one does. So you're not convicted of your atheism? Well I'm I am, sure. no I am, because atheism is only rejecting the claim that there is a God. Atheism isn't a belief system. This is a popular claim among atheists, because if this is true, then they don't really have the burden of proof to defend their position. Let me give two problems with this definition. This definition makes atheism meaningless. If we define atheism as simply a rejection of the claim that God exists, then atheism is just a claim about the atheist state of mind, not a claim about God's existence. The atheist is simply saying, I'm not psychologically convinced that God exists. So what? A person's psychological state is irrelevant in the pursuit of truth because it offers no evidence for or against God. If I say that I lack a belief in unguided evolution, then no atheist would say that this shows that evolution is therefore false. With this definition, atheism cannot be true or false, which makes it meaningless. If atheists wish to join the debate about God's existence, then they should not hide behind their meaningless definition and state what they believe instead of just claiming that they lack belief. And this brings me to the second problem. Atheists have a worldview with positive beliefs. It is not really true that atheists just lack a belief in God, there's more going on. To just lack a belief in God is agnosticism, not atheism. Most atheists really believe that God does not exist and their worldview reflect this. We all have a worldview. A worldview is a set of beliefs about the big questions in life such as where do we come from? What's the meaning of life? How should we live? What's our destiny? Whether God exists has major implications to the answers we give to the big questions. First regarding human origins. If God does not exist, then there's not really a reason why we exist. We are a cosmic accident. But if God exists, then he intended us to be here. According to the theist, ultimate reality is not space, time and matter, but consciousness. Mind precedes matter. Most atheists, on the other hand, because they don't believe in God, think that matter precedes mind. They think ultimate reality is matter and that human minds are derived from this. And this is called materialism. But of course, to think that materialism is true requires evidence. You cannot just say that since you reject the claim that God exists, you are justified to believe that materialism is true. No atheist would say that a Christian has made a good case because he simply rejects the claim that materialism is true. The point I'm trying to make is that everybody has a worldview and therefore everybody has the burden of proof to defend it. Atheists have the responsibility to make a compelling case for many important things, such as the beginning of the universe. What is the cause of the universe if God does not exist? The fine-tuning of the universe. How does the atheist explain the fact that the fundamental constants and quantities of the universe are so precisely fine-tuned for life if there's no God? The laws of nature. Where do the laws of nature come from if there's no lawgiver? Information. Our DNA, for example, is a code of over 3 billion letters long, written in perfect order. Where does this information come from if there's no intelligent designer? Or life. If God does not exist, then life must have originated from non-life. How does the atheist explain this? Objective morality. How can certain acts like raping and torturing be really evil if there's no God who's the perfect standard of goodness? The list goes on, but I think you can see my point. We all have a worldview and we all have the burden of proof. It follows that Ricky is not justified to hide behind his lazy definition of atheism. He has the burden of proof to show how ultimate reality can be explained without God. Let's continue. Everything in the universe was once crunched into something smaller than atom. But you don't Three know that. Well, you're just believing but, Stephen but not, Hawking, but, and that's a matter of faith in his abilities. Yeah, the, yes. You don't know it yourself. You're accepting that because someone told you. Yeah, well, but science, science is constantly proved all the time. You see, if we take something like any fiction, in any holy book, in any other fiction, yeah. and destroyed it, yeah. okay, in a thousand years' time, that wouldn't come back just as it was. Yes. Whereas if we took every science book, yes. right, and every fact, and destroyed them all. In a thousand years, they'd all be back, because all the same tests would be the same result. That's good. That's really good. Right. 
First, to call all holy books fiction is just an unhelpful assertion. How does Ricky know that all holy books are fictional? Just because they are in a different category than science books? That is not a good reason. However, I think I understand where Ricky is coming from. What seems more compelling? A science book based on empirical fact or a holy book based on supposed revelation? All things being equal, I too think that a science book is more reliable than a book that simply asserts, without a way to test it, it is based on God's revelation. However, this doesn't mean that Ricky is justified to claim that science books are more reliable than all holy books. What if there is a holy book that can be tested to see if it's an actual revelation from God? This is the case with the Bible. For example, if there is strong historical evidence that Jesus claimed to be God, that he died on the cross and that he physically rose from the dead, then we have good reason to believe the things he said. In that case, we are justified to believe that the scriptures are the word of God, because that is what Jesus taught. So by examining the historical evidence concerning Jesus' resurrection, we can determine whether the Bible is true. Ricky throws all religious books and fiction on one big pile and dismisses it altogether, but he's not justified in doing so. Last but not least, his final and most absurd claim, followed by a brilliant response from philosopher David Wood. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. You don't believe in 2,999 gods, and I don't believe in just one more. Well, there's a world of difference between one and none. Um, here's a podium. Uh, let's suppose we try to understand how this podium got here, and uh, some of you believe that many people got together and built the podium, and that would be uh, polypodium builderism. And others say, no, just get one good podium builder, then th th that's it. And we'll call that monopodium builderism. And then you've got the atheist who says, there was no podium builder, the podium just is. And we say, well, that's absurd. And the response from the atheist, it seems, is, well, you rejected all those other podium builders. I just went one more than you. Yeah, but we were already down to one. And in going from one to zero, you go from common sense to nonsense.